So this question looks like it's going to be a simplify question. I know that because it's short. Simplify questions are typically between one and three lines long. And also because it contains this expression here, right? Simplify questions uh, typically contain either an expression or an equation. So that's a good way for you to identify questions that require simplification, short and either an expression or equation included. So this question says, which of the following is a value of x for which the expression, and I'll just write the expression down, negative 3 over x squared plus 3x minus 10 is undefined. Okay, so how is it possible that a fraction is undefined? So hopefully that's a hint to you. So really, one of the first times in school that you hear this term undefined is when you divide by zero. So I'll just put an X here because it doesn't matter what's in the numerator. But as soon as you have a zero in the denominator, the conclusion or the answer, the solution to that is undefined. So if we have negative 3 over X squared plus 3X minus 10, and we're trying to figure out, well, what is an x value that makes that expression undefined? We're basically saying, well, how can x squared plus 3x minus 10 equal 0? If we can make it equal 0, then yeah, negative 3 over 0 will be undefined. So let's do that. So what we have here is a trinomial. Um, this trinomial can be factored. Um, so I'm going to factor it, and then I'm going to show you one other way to solve this, which may or may not seem easier to you. So if I'm factoring a trinomial, I'll always set up my two sets of parentheses here. I'm looking at the last term here, this negative 10, and I'm basically asking myself, what are two numbers or two factors right, that multiply to equal negative 10 but add up to positive 3? And those two values are 5 and negative 2. So what I do inside the parentheses is I have my x here because that's always going to be the case when I just have an x squared in front. And I have so x plus 5 and x minus 2. Again, because 5 times negative 2 is negative 10 and because 5 minus 2 is positive 3. So x plus 5 times x minus 2 equals 0. And I can set each of those binomials equal to 0 separately. And in this case, that means that x would equal negative 5. So that's one option. And again, I add 2 to both sides here. So in this case, x will equal positive 2. So that's another option. So that tells me that choice D is the correct answer. Another way to do this, if you don't want to do the factoring or if you don't feel confident in the factoring, is to say, hey, I know that I need to get this x squared plus 3x minus 10 to equal 0. I know that the question is asking me to find the value of x, which means all of these answer choices here represent an x value. So I could just go and start to do some substitution, right? So in fact, the strategy here is called plug in answers. I can say, hey, choice answer choice A, well, what happens if I plug in negative 3 into these x's? Does that make it equal to 0? So let's see. I'd say negative 3 squared plus 3 times negative 3 minus 10. And I'm asking myself, does that equal 0? Negative 3 squared is 9. Um, 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. And then we have minus 10. 9 minus 9 is 0. But negative 10 does not equal 0. So that's why choice A is out. So I won't go through all of these, but I will show you why D works. So when I try choice D and I plug in 2 for x squared or for x, I get 2 squared plus 3 times 2 minus 10. And again, I want to check to see if that's equal to 0. So 2 squared is 4. 3 times 2 is 6. 4 plus 6 is 10. So I have 10 minus 10. And that, in fact, does equal 0. Zero, So that tells me that 2 is a solution because when I plug it in, it's equal to 0. So here's the simplify route. It's much more traditional math. Um, and here's the plug-in answer route, which is just as good on this test.